With over 50% of all single people living in the past obsessing about their exes, have we become people that are unable to live in the present or the future, that retrospectively and nostalgically glance back into the past, hoping to make ourselves great again, an ethno-nationalism of self, pining for a yesteryear that never existed? What is it about previous relationships that we find so hard to let go of. Did you know that 50% of women and 40% of men still look at their previous partner's social media profiles? That suggests a real inability to let go of the past and move on. Let me think about myself when I've been in relationships. Oh, it's hard, isn't it, to let go? Because I tell you what, this is what I think happens. Once you're not with someone anymore, even though if the whole time you're with them, you're like, they're getting on my nerves. They're getting on my nerves. The minute the relationship's over, you're like, oh no, they was the one. What was I thinking? Oh, I'll never find anyone that loves me the way that I love them, and et cetera, et cetera. You sort of pine for it. Once it's uh, liberated from the necessity of uh, being in your real life, it can escape into your fantasy life where everything is perfect. It's very difficult for, uh, as Churchill said, for any plan to survive human contact. Perhaps it's true of relationships. When you're actually in one, your expectations become unreasonable. I know I do. This is my problem. I unconsciously expect the person that I'm with to resolve many of my problems, if not all of my problems, to make me feel at ease with myself, to deal, help me deal with my inadequacy and inferiority, and help me feel fulfilled. I think that's a, a really interesting tendency. To be successful in a relationship, you have to recognise that you have your own journey, they have their own journey, you come together to collaborate on projects such as raising children or setting up a home or ha having a shared vision of the future. When a relationship ends, if you're hankering after it, I suppose it's because you are now confronted with the reality of the person that you are. A breakup is a very difficult thing to survive when you are deeply enmeshed, immersed and lost within someone else. The feeling that the expansive territories in front of you have now been annihilated and leave you on a precipice staring into the abyss. But it's a weird thing if you can't get go. I don't do that stalking people on the internet thing because uh, that's not good for me. I don't think I could handle that at all. I feel like that if you're not going to be in a relationship with someone, if you've made the decision from a rational, not necessarily rational, but certainly a considered place, once the decision has been made, you should not look back. Here's something that's definitely suggested by people that are authorities in codependency and not being able to let go of someone that's not in your life. I think that is codependency. It's like you're living with an imaginary object. They say 30 days, zero contact on either side. Take the number, take their number out of your phone, block their number, no contact, no looking at their social media, no fantasizing about them or like sort of wondering what they might be doing, no probing friends to see what your genuine feelings are. Because I feel like this, I feel like when we're in pain, we're sort of the same way as like, you know, like maybe some numbing agent would enter your body if to prevent you from feeling a severe injury. Perhaps it's comparable on an emotional level. You feel some rupture or trauma, you're flooded hormonally, and you're unable to have a realistic perspective of the situation. You need a little bit of time to think about it. What have you allowed someone to become representative of that you're unable to let go of them. It's almost like you've transitioned from condemning them in the relationship or deifying them in the relationship to a position where you're no longer in a physical relationship with them, but you're still in a mental and fantasy relationship with them. In a sense as well, we shouldn't just be thinking, should we, like, oh, now I'll move forward into a new relationship with another person, because the primary relationship we have to have in our lives is with ourselves. That's the person we live inside of continually, constantly. Whatever happens to me, if I die today or in you know decades from now, I'll be in continual contact with the pattern of biochemical impulses and the bank of memories that I refer to as myself, that construct that I refer to as myself. My sense is that if you have difficulty letting go of someone you've previously had a relationship with, you've allowed them to become an emblem of something you should be taking responsibility for yourself, either your sense of fun, your sense of romance, your sense of pragmatism and responsibility. You have nominated that person and now they're not with you. You feel an emptiness. 
but you need to cultivate that in yourself to move forward. So it's like you've got to go, go cold turkey from that person. You've got to liberate yourself from the idea that any person can resolve you. This is why it's helpful, necessary, may I say, to have a spiritual dimension to your well-being program. Because if you don't have a kind of conscious experience of, hmm, uh, well, I want to say an ulterior reality. I mean, something that's not just here in the material world. Oh, I'm doing well. West Ham are top of the league. I've got a fancy new girlfriend. I've got a fancy new car. Everything's fantastic. Oh, no. Girlfriend gone. Car gone. Career gone. Everything gone. I'm useless. I'm worthless. Unless you have some continuum, some constancy, then you are living in a kind of meteorological system of things. Just what comes and what goes. You're being tossed around on some unknowable and uncontrollable breeze and the obsession with the X and the stalking online. Heaven forbid you're a person that continually goes back to your previous partner and continues to have a physical or sexual relationship with them long after you're in a committed relationship with them. How are you ever going to move forward? Not necessarily move forward to another relationship except for moving forward into a relationship with yourself that's not contingent on other people's approval not contingent on someone else's validation or someone else's presence. Now I say all this to you, I couldn't be more codependent on my wife. I phone her when I'm on my way home from things sometimes. I've only popped out from the house for five minutes. You know, these are things that I'm very much working on myself, but at least it's a person that I'm actually physically in a relationship with and I still don't follow her on Facebook or, well, I probably do, but I don't, you know, look at it. What I'm saying is, Live in your present reality. Discover what it is that you've allowed your ex-partner to become a symbol of. Don't stop the investigation at the point of, oh, I really love them, I want to get back with them, or I really hate them. What is it? Because all that you experience is happening within you, me mediated by your sensory experience. It's the inner world that needs to be remedied. It's the inner world that needs to be aligned. Your ex is an illusion. Hello, I'm doing these new videos more frequently now. Please hit the notification button at the end of this video because then you'll get a, like a little bell when uh, I post a new video and I'd like you to get a little bell when I post a video. Then I can, I don't know, be buzzing away in your pocket. Sounds like I'd be like a little pocket mosquito. Anyway, subscribe, click the bell because I want more people to watch the YouTube videos. You specifically.